things. She's a teacher. She's a mommy. She's a wife. She's a yummy, yummy person. And she knows deep, deep truths about joy. And she learned many of them from her mother, Bryce Rebbitz and Esther Young. And we are very, very touched and um, honored to have Rebbitz and Young uh, uh, Wolf on with us today. <laughs> Okay, Slavi, take it away. How are you? Thank you so much. It's so good to be here and with our wonderful audience. Thank you for inviting me. I'm looking forward. Me too. So here's the thing. I, I, we just got, we get right to business here. We don't like mess around and try and fiddle around. We want to know, what do you mean by joy? Like joy, like, like really, like really? Okay, so. Like what, really. What, is, <laughs> what does know, joy mean? What, first we, of all, what does joy all, mean and how do we get there? Absolutely. We're all we're right all now. right now in a situation where we could find ourselves just going down, spiraling down. Or we can take a road where we say, you know what, I'm going to figure something out in my life now. There's a mistake that a lot of us have made. And that is confusing fun with joy. What's joy? You know what joy is? Joy is a feeling of, I'll, I'll say the word in, in what we have in Judaism, menuchas hanefesh. It means just peace inside of me. It doesn't mean that everything in my life is perfect, but it means that there's a place inside of me that is tranquil. There's a place inside of me that I feel this emotion of not fun, but joy, because joy is everlasting. So even if I'm going through something, I wake up in the morning, I go to sleep at night, I can go through aggravation, but I'm grounded with this feeling of it's okay, because inside there is this feeling of spirit, of joy. Once you lose that spirit, you've lost your joy. That's the question. This is How fantastic. You- that, that That's fantastic. Except I'm just sitting here. I can tell my readers are letting like li- literally thinking, well, that's great. How do you get, I- I'm filled with anxiety. I'm filled with stress. I don't, I can't even stay on top of things. Like, you know, it used to be, I thought I was busy before, but like my kids would be off at school and then I'd have, oh, okay, everyone's it, you know, whatever. Now I have nothing. What do you mean joy? I like, I like <laughs> tranquility in my soul. Like, so, so how do you get to that place? That's yeah, the that's question. Right. We're all going through that. You know, I, I threw a load of laundry in right before we were doing this. I mean, we're all being stretched to a hundred different directions and Shavuos is coming, right? Right. If you don't have that joy inside of you, you're not grounded. So the first thing is we have to not confuse something that's lasting and something that is not lasting. What's lasting? happiness to say you know it makes me happy i'm happy when i when i go out to to a, to a, a show let's say or i'm happy whatever it is that makes me happy that's not joy if you look in the torah you know what lasts forever and what is the word for fun in the torah if you think about it what's the word for fun do you ever hear like avram avinu had fun okay we, <laughs> we, no why not it's okay to have fun. It's not against Torah to have fun, of course. But You're saying the word fun isn't in the Torah. It's not in the Torah. So you know that whatever is not in the Torah is not something that is lasting forever. Simcha is in the Torah. That's joy. So what's the difference between fun and joy? Fun is fleeting. I do something. It's fun. And then tomorrow, I want to have more fun. And think about it. If you have a new experience, let's say, you know, you went even to Disney. But the next day... And the next week, you couldn't stay five months in Disney. You couldn't even stay, you know, two weeks in Disney. Because after a while, what happens? You go to the best restaurant. The next time, mm, not as great, right? Why? Because that's fun, but it's not joy. Joy is minuch that I know inside of me there is something that no one can take away. No one can, t- no one can take this away. I have that serenity. I have this feeling. Now, how do you get there? That's the question. How do you get to a place of joy? So I always say everything's in the Torah. I, I learned this from my mother. I have to say, Rabbi and Young Grace, my mother. She translate told that, me, translate that, translate that. Translate what Turn the pages, turn the pages. Everything is in the Torah. If I want to know how to live, you know, I have a parenting book, Raising a Child with Soul. How do you know how to raise a child? If you look in secular books, okay, and and you'll look at this psychologist or that psychologist, even how to put a baby to sleep. Every year, there's just another way of doing something. And, and the, the way next, last year was wrong. Right. <laughs> and, then, and then they Whatever say, you you sleep him on the side. No, 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 no. Sleep no. him on the back. Yeah, okay, right. Did yeah. you let him cry? Now there's terrible emotional problems. Now there's a whole nother way. So how do I know that what I'm plugging into is right? Torah is immutable. It's forever. Turn the pages, turn the pages. 
everything is here. So if I want to know the secret, the first thing I do is I go to the first Jewish woman who ever lived. And that was Sarah Imenu, Mother Sarah. Her home, even though she had a lot of challenges, was filled with blessing. You see? And when I have blessing, I have joy. When I, That gives me joy. That's not the same as having fun. And fun, I said, is okay. But joy is something that permeates the environment. Did Sari Imenu, did Mother Sarah have a difficult life? You bet. She couldn't have children for so long. Look what she went, she went through. She was the first Jewish woman who ever lived. Don't you think people came to her and said, you know, teach me, teach me. How do I raise my children? And she had none. She didn't even have one. How difficult do you think that was? Living in the heat, always welcoming guests. And what do we learn about her? We learned that her home was filled with light. Her home was filled with blessing. What was her secret? It wasn't that she had an easy life and went to the spa every day. That wasn't her secret. How did mother? Oh, shucks. <laughs> Get it. That, okay, that wasn't that. that that's that not going to work. Wasn't, okay, all right. That's, that's, that's during totally COVID. Good. Okay, you know, we have to find something that will give us the key to joy no matter what goes on in life. Who would ever imagine you'd be stuck in your house on lockdown? And if you're only happy when you get out, now what happens now if you're in? That joy has to be with you whether you're in and out, whether life is up or down, whether you're going through a challenge or you're going through a very easy time of life, because that's what life is, isn't it? Nobody has it good all the time. Nobody has it terrible all the time you know things change but what cannot change the spirit that's inside of me i have to work on finding this joy inside of me so how do we learn it from sari menu from mother sarah did she have a hard life check yes did she have to do new things that were just unheard of to her absolutely she was the first she jewish woman she didn't have a torah teacher she didn't have a rebbitzin she didn't have torah any time to go on okay i mean we are so lucky with all the different variables in our life she didn't have a bobby she didn't have a mommy she didn't have school she didn't have education she didn't have a friend who was on her level i mean people talk about going to communities where nobody knows what they're talking about when it comes to how do I invite someone for Shabbos if they don't know what Shabbos is? What happens to my children? I mean, she went through everything, all these tests. And still, what does it? What do we learn about her? Her home was filled with light, number one. Her Shabbos candles from one week to the next. What is light in your life? That's joy. How did she get there? Her challah stayed fresh from one week to the next. Now, that's what I want us to think about, the first key to joy. What does it mean if your challah is fresh, your dough is fresh? It means that her portion in life was always fresh. It was never stale. Meaning, we live in a world where it's very easy to look at one's life and say, I can't believe it. Look at her life. Everybody's posting. And you think everybody else has it easy. Look at their kids. They're so perfect. Look how she's dressed. Look at her husband. Look what they got. Look where they're going even during lockdown. They're going to Orlando, right? Uh, we have to stay here. I mean, when you start comparing your life to everybody else's life, do you know what happens? You don't see your own bracha. You don't see your own blessing because you're so busy looking at everybody else's. And the truth is, you don't know what's going on behind that picture. Everybody has a struggle. Everybody has a challenge. If I'm so busy looking at everybody else's challenge, I will never, and everybody else's blessing, I will never see my own blessing in life. And I will never find that joy because I'm so busy putting my eye on everyone else. else. So I had uh, actually a, a student last week sent me an email and it said that, um, I am really down. I'm having a really hard time with everything. You know, life is it's just, got, it's just too much and I don't get any break and I feel like my husband's not helping enough and I'm having all these issues. And what I do is I sit there and I say, okay, I'm going to count my blessings, which is what you're saying. You know, I'm going to, I'm going to go through and, you know, and journal it and make lists of everything that I'm happy for I do and that. I, and here's what happens to me is I think, I have all this blessing and I'm still depressed and I'm still sad and, and, and moping around. So now God is going to, you know, like he's going to punish me for saying, I gave you so much, just like, you know, I gave you so much. And now your response is to be sad. Well, watch how you feel when you don't have much. And I, and I said something, it is not about punishing, 
You know, right. but I'd like to, I'd, I'd like, like to, I'd like to know your response to that because that's a real emotion. Like I, I can tra- trace that in my own head of, of having that feeling of like, when you start counting your bro- blessings, it makes you feel even worse because you, um, don't, um, it's kind of like, there's so much there and, and you're still not able to lift your mood. Okay. I, I think that there are different steps over here. It's not that one thing is going to be the cure-all, but I think the first thing we have to do is wake up in the morning with an attitude of gratitude. Attitude creates a positive energy in my life. And I can't be happy if I'm down and negative. That's for sure. Okay. So we wake up in the morning and the first thing that we say is moda'ani. Thank you, God. Thank you, Hashem. Interesting, we don't say animo de, I am thankful. We say grateful am I, which is kind of awkward if you think about it. Why don't we say animo de, I am thankful? Why do we say mode ani, thankful am I? It's a little weird. The lesson is from the moment we wake up, you cannot put the emphasis on the I. It has to be on the gratitude. It's a whole different way of looking at life. Now, we've been trained And our children are trained. This is really the first generation growing up like this where you take selfies, okay? When we were kids, did you ever think of taking a camera and just posing at the camera, you know, and looking at yourself? (laughs) It's true. Think about that, right? It's true. You never. 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 You'd be embarrassed. You'd be like, and you. Who could think that all your pictures would be of yourself? Do you remember developing pictures? Okay. (laughs) Remember that? Mm -hmm. Could you imagine picking up a whole package of like 30 pictures, 36 pictures, and everyone would be just of you? It was always of other people or things or friends, or you'd ask someone to take a picture of you with other people, right? This has shown us how we've traveled from experiencing with others as opposed to just thinking of how am I doing right now? How am I feeling right now? I'm feeling down. So when we only put the lens of our eyes on ourselves, we magnify every emotion. Of course, you're going to be sad. Of course, you're going to be down because you stop connecting to other people. You know, the word bari to be healthy is not just about not having COVID. It's about bore to create. When I create connections with people, I'm a healthy person. If I'm just busy thinking the whole day, taking a thermometer, well, how do I feel right now emotionally? Am I happy right now? I have to think what gives me joy, what makes me happy. It's not going to be just thinking of myself. That's a selfish life and selfish people are never happy, never. So what does make me happy? First of all, we start with Moda'ani, that I start with an attitude of gratitude. Is it easy? It's not easy, but we have to think about working on ourselves now. If we take this time that Hashem has given us, that God has given us, and we come out either more down than we were or the same as we were, and we haven't used this time to think and to better ourselves, then what's, what's the point of all this? So it comes down to this. Am I becoming right now better or bitter? Where am I going with this? Wow. And if I'm becoming bitter, I have to look at myself. If I'm becoming bitter, how do I change that and become better? It's okay. We can look at ourselves and say, you know what? I feel like I'm going into Yeish, into a place of down. And that's not good for me. It's not good for the people in my lives. It's not good for for my connection with Hashem, with God. It's not good for anybody. I have a choice right now. If I choose joy, how do I get there? But I first have to decide to choose it. So I I want to go through the list of how to choose it. And hold on. Wait, I just, yeah, I just, yeah. Because a couple of um, people are asking is they would feel joy and they would choose joy. But their husband has to be at work and their kids need to be in school <laughs> and, and they need to be a lot of that. They're like, I could choose joy, but right now my life is so busy. I don't even have a, a thought to think like I don't have a chance to think. Am I bitter or better? I have nothing. I'm literally just going on survival autopilot. Mode. Just trying survival. To get, so, yeah, survival. so I want to I want to I want to ask us all something before all this COVID. Do you think that? Everyone walked around with joy. Do you think everyone walked around like, I am so happy with my life right now. 
Okay. That's There's it. always going to be something. And I'm not saying this is not a big thing. We're all going through a big thing right now. But then I have to ask myself, how do I find my oxygen? Because menucha senefesh, serenity in life, is my oxygen. The way that I speak, the way that I walk, the way that I treat my husband, my children, my friends, my mother-in-law, my parents, my grandchildren, that's my choice. And before COVID, there were things that got us stressed out. And after COVID, there's going to be things that get us stressed out. So I have to decide how to find that oxygen as a woman. Now, when you go on a plane, and we all will as our session soon, okay? When you go on a plane, what does the flight attendant say? She says, if you have a dependent, the first thing you have to do, if God forbid there's an emergency, put the mask on yourself and then help your dependents. Because you cannot help others if you yourself don't have that oxygen. What I'm saying to all the women listening today is this. There's always going to be something. How do you find your oxygen? And that's joy. How do you find your inspiration? You have to live with passion in life. You have to live with inspiration. You have to live with a sense of purpose, of meaning. You have to grow in life. If I'm the same person that I was 5, 10, 15 years ago, the same things are driving me crazy. I'm growing more bitter. What is that? What is that? The word tzameach, Rabbi Hirsch teaches us to grow tzameach is related to the word tzameach, to be happy. What's the connection? Because when I grow in life as a human being, that makes me very happy. It's only when I become this taker and I just keep taking from people and I'm just angry all the time and I'm out of control and I'm not working as a human being on my neshama. I'm not nourishing my soul. Now, that sounds very spiritual, but we can all do that. It's very okay. easy. Let's, Let's do, I want to go through the steps because we have five really awesome steps so that so people walk away with step. I just want to also follow up with my student who last week because I would just want to make sure that people who might be in that situation who are counting their blessings and making the gratitude list and feeling worse about it, that no, you are doing exactly what our Jewish Torah tells us to do, which is to focus on the good. And eventually that will get you there. So it might, you might feel like, oh, I'm so, I'm still feeling bummed out. And, and I think Listen. I have all these things to be grateful for, but Listen. I just want people to know that's the right percent. It'll get Torah, you. Torah and Judaism is not about guilt. Okay. And there's no mm -hmm. Quick step. Oh, I'm not Pollyanna. I don't believe like, you know, you count your blessings and you walk around the whole day and you're happy for life. But what we're trying to do is we're trying to find tools so that when we go through the challenge, we can still feel grounded and serenity within. And it doesn't come from guilt. And it doesn't come from beating ourselves up or saying Hashem punishes. That's that, you know, I don't, Hashem's our father. Hashem loves us. This is about love, and I cannot love others if I don't love myself, and I cannot connect with Hashem if I look at Hashem as this, you know, scary thing that I'm just like this. Yira Shemayim does not mean fear, it means awe, to have awe, to know that you're in the presence of a father who loves you, who takes care of you, who guides you. So good, so beautiful. Yeah, Randy, by the way, from um, Facebook, Randy Jewell said, it always comes from within. That's where the real work, um, it's all about, is doing the real work. It's work. And no one should have a button on you, a switch, that they can turn your joy off and on. You see, then you know you don't really have it. If somebody can come over to you and give you a look or say something and strip you of your joy, then... That means I need to work on my joy inside because it has to be like my oxygen. It has to be flowing inside of me. So let's start with step number one, which because okay. we did our pre-show interview and we had this great you know, list of things. The number one you say is to forgive. And I want to understand that fully because you said your point, you said people who can't forgive can't be basimcha. Basimcha means with joy. Absolutely. Oh, so explain that. Where am I getting that from? If you Judaism has such deep wisdom for us, it's incredible. You know, I, I love to see how Judaism and Torah gives us a way to navigate our lives. 
it's not just a pasuk or a verse. And I wish we can give this over to our children. It's not about getting an Aleph plus or a 99 on your test. It's your lifeline. So the word for simcha, joy, can also be read as shemacha, which means to forgive. Did, did you ever go to an airport? Okay, you see somebody walking around and they have this luggage. There are bags hanging over them. Things are just popping out of their luggage. They're zipping and they keep having to try to take from one part to another because it's overweight and they're schlepping. When we walk around and we have a grudge on somebody, when we cannot look at somebody, when we have a stomach ache from somebody because we're carrying something from the past and we can't forgive, we're angry, it makes us bitter, that's called emotional baggage. We're like that person in the airport who is schlepping, wow. it's too heavy, I have to take it from here, and then we wonder, why don't I feel good? Because I'm eating myself up inside. My mother would say to me, it's amazing how people let others live rent-free in their brain. You're letting, allowing somebody to just be in your head day and night, rent-free, taking away all of your happiness. You're so angry. I once sat with a couple, and they were having some issues. And I said, what is it? So they look at each other, and she says, it's his mother. It's my mother-in-law. I said, okay, so tell me. She said, my mother-in-law did not allow me to choose the flowers for my wedding. She took over the whole thing. And I, I'm just so angry. I, I can't look at her. I can't talk to her. So we had a little conversation. And then I said, one second, how many years are you married? How long are you married? And you know what she said to me? 15 years. 15 years, Bobola. 15 years you're hanging on to this from your wedding. I'm not saying it's right what was done. But if you're going to hold on to that for 15 years, do you know how angry and bitter, do you know how hard it is to carry that weight inside of you when you cannot forgive? Sometimes it comes to a point where you've got to let it go. And you've got to believe that Hashem, God sees everything in life. Hashem takes care of things. But just by being angry at somebody, by getting more and more bitter, by holding I'm, I'm that getting touch. a thing here that says, how do you forgive if you don't, if they don't apologize? Okay, good question. So what do you think I'm going to say? We're going to go back to the Torah again. We're going to go back because everything's there. And I okay. love it because it's immutable. It's not my idea. You see, if you sit down with someone who says, you know, I have this idea. I'm going to write a self-help book. And then next year, there's a new idea. But this is all from Torah. So we learn from David HaMelech, King David. He went through so much suffering, so much embarrassment and shame. And he's walking. He was kicked out of his palace and people are stoning him and shaming him. And what does he say? He says, I realize this comes from Hashem. He composes Tehillim. He composes Psalms. Tehillim Gimel, if you look inside, Psalm 3. And I would say to somebody who feels that they've been hurt by another person who won't apologize. You've had the conversation. You've tried to speak to the person. You don't get anywhere. Sometimes it happens. So besides, of course, praying, okay, davening, that you're able to open somebody's heart for peace. What would I say? What gives me the strength to forgive? What gives us the strength to forgive? We all make mistakes in life. Only an angel never falls. OK, there's nobody who's listening right now who could say, I've always spoken perfectly to everybody. I've never hurt another person. I've never made a mistake in life. But what do we do? Not only do we excuse ourselves, but we ask Hashem, we ask God every every day. We say, Salah Lanu, Hashem, Almighty God, forgive me. Now, why would Hashem forgive me? Why do we come to Yom Kippur every single year with all our different, you know, packages and expect that Hashem forgives us. If I can say, Almighty God, Hashem, I know I'm not perfect. And I'm asking you to love me and forgive me. But guess what? There's somebody who hurt me so bad. And I am going to dig deep inside and I'm going to forgive them. It's so hard for me. But I'm going to forgive them so that you now forgive me. And especially in these... Right, right, goosebumps? That's unbelievable. 
we can actually change the entire muzzle mazel of Am Yisrael, of our people. If every single Friday night before we bench lech, before we light our Shabbos candles, we take a minute and we say, Hashem, I know words were said this week that shouldn't have been said. Actions were done that shouldn't have been done. There's a lot of hurt in every house. Of course they could be hurt. You know, people are living on top of each other. It's like a tinderbox. And it's not that you don't love the person person but there's yes we have to watch but sometimes we make mistakes Hashem I forgive please forgive me forgive my home forgive Am Yisrael bring us home forgive us again we cannot imagine the zechus the merit that we women have we can actually change the world and i really believe bring geula we really can that's awesome thank you sarit you had a thing a no question. yeah that randy randy from um facebook actually said that the someone holding on to anger is just basically wants to suffer it's a suffering state because really who gets who ends up being hurt out of that not the person who angered you it's you yourself. You're hurting yourself. So in the long run, you're suffering. If you hold on to anger, and I'm not saying it's easy, but if you hold on to it, you eat up your stomach. You know, mm-hmm. you eat you eat up your insides. And mm-hmm. you watch yourself. You don't recognize yourself after a while. Look in the mirror and you see that you've lost, you've lost the joy. A light in your eyes has gone out because you're so angry. Who wants to grow to become an angry person? So what do the steps give? What are what can what are the practical things? Number one, they do the great way- question. Okay. okay. So number one, I would say we have to decide that we're not going to hold on to the anger. We're ready to forgive. And we don't, we say, don't say but. You know, I wish I could forgive but and we take ourselves back all over again to all that. Decide you're really ready to be this strong person. It takes strength. Are you going to be an active person or a reactive person? It's a different way of living. Reactive means that whenever somebody says something, I just react. Active means I'm going to take action. I am in control over here. I want to be an active person. I don't want to be a reactive person. I don't want to keep reacting and let people's words just nick me all the time until I'm left with nothing. I feel like this big. Because somebody else is making me feel like that. I don't want to react to everybody. That's number two, okay? When it comes to number three, it is forgiving, like we said, to really work on ourselves to say, Hashem, I'm going to put myself in a new place right now. Almighty God, I'm going to forgive so that you forgive me. So that we understand that we are creating this connection now with Hashem, with God. And in the process, becoming a better person ourselves, a stronger person. I don't want to walk around life being a weak person. I don't want to let people push me into a small place. If a person wants to speak like that or act like that, that's their problem. My father once said to me something incredible when I was a young girl. Somebody had gotten me upset and my father said to me, Shefala, he said, which means sweet dear, Shefala, Hashem God gave you Two eyes and two ears. You know why? Open one eye and close the other. Let the words go in one ear and out the other. You don't have to see everything. You don't have to hear everything. It doesn't mean you should be a schmat in life. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying you be the strong one. You be the one in control. You be the one in power. Don't let somebody's words make you think that th- that you are not good enough strong enough, big enough, you have the power to strengthen yourself, empower yourself. That's what I'm trying to say. And we go back to the Torah, back to Lot's wife, the only person, okay, who became a pillar of salt in the Torah. Did you ever think about that? Like, why? What did Lot's wife do? What did she do? She looked back. She turned around. Now, why did she become a pillar of so listen how it is, okay? Some say because she didn't want to have the kindness of lending salt out to her neighbors. But let me let me ask you something. If she didn't lend out salt, out butter, she didn't lend out chocolate, okay? Why did she become like a pillar of sprinkles, you know? She could have been anything, a pillar of pepper. Why salt? 
Or garlic some, powder. Yeah, let's yeah, go. Anything, <laughs> garlic powder, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. Because what do we use salt for? You use salt to preserve. It's a preservative. If you want, if you want meat to last, you have to put salt on it. What hurts when you have a wound? When you pour salt into the wound. Now, it's okay a little bit of salt in your bowl of soup. But if you're going to put too much salt or just only salt, it's terrible. Salt is okay. To remember a little bit is okay if you learn from it. But to just look back and be angry, to just always be turning behind and looking behind, you will become a pillar of salt. And take the word melach, which is salt, and turn you have machal to forgive. I don't want to walk around life as a pillar of salt. I'm sure that there is no woman listening right now who says, you know what? I want to be like Lot's wife. I want to just keep bringing things up. You know, there are some people, women especially, we have this gift we can remember from 25 years ago in a marriage, you know? Yep. <laughs> and what happens? We have a discussion. I'll call it discussion about something. But all of a sudden, you're bringing things up from 15 years ago. And it becomes this huge blow up. For what? Because we haven't stayed in the moment. And we keep going backwards and backwards. You with joy. That is your mentality. To keep going backwards in life. Decide it's, it's today. It's a powerful visual to think of like looking up from your husband that he did years ago or whatever. But when you're doing that, that you turn into salt, that is such a powerful image to keep us from doing that. Thank you for that. You know what and, I'm saying? And, and think of the yeah. lunch you're schlepping, schlepping with you. You know, every time you bring something up like that, it's another outfit in the suitcase. There comes a point where the suitcase is just going to explode. It's overweight. You can't. Okay, let's go like on that. to number two. You have a question sure. quickly for me? Sir? No, no. We're okay, good. fine. Let's go to number two. So number two is, um, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. You were talking about no, uh, about the difference between fun and joy. Okay, so there's a difference here between fun and joy. What do you look for in the Torah? You look for things that exist forever in life. Okay, that's how you know something is, real. is real. There is no word for fun because it's not real. Fun slips on. Joy is forever. Now, my what, question is... What is pleasure and fun and joy? I'm a little confused on the... You okay. Know. Pleasure is oneg. You do, interestingly enough, find the word oneg in the Torah. Now, what's the difference? difference? What gives you pleasure? This goes back, I just, I just thought about this, and I love this. What gives you pleasure in life? You spoke before, Leah, about, about guilt. Nega, the word nega means to be struck with something. How do you turn that feeling of guilt, of being struck with something like, oh my gosh, you know, someone said to me the other day, a single girl said to me, I feel like Hashem just doesn't like me. Mm. How do you get rid of that hurt? Yeah. That's a nega. You feel like you're struck. So the same word nega can turn What did you say to her, though? I have to know what you said to her to make her feel. <laughs> I, I, we, it was a long conversation, but Hashem loves us. Hashem really does. And sometimes we go through struggles. We have to ask ourselves from the struggle this word. And here's another word, because there's so much wisdom to be taken. It's not lama why. Why, 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 Hashem, are you doing this to me? It's lima. For what purpose am I going through this? And the purpose of her struggle and how she can change. If you don't change when you go through pain, the pain is just simply pain that cuts you. It's like taking a knife and, God forbid, just cutting yourself. But if you have a shot and you know you're getting a vaccine and it hurts, but you know that the vaccination is going to be there to make you be alive and protect you, then that pain is purposeful. So we spoke about how to take cool and change. You see, too many of us sit in pain and we just say, Hashem, you forgot about me. Everything's terrible. We don't allow ourselves to move on. That's another way of being like Lot's wife. You're, you're stuck. You're, you're in quicksand and you're not able to move on in life. If my purpose in life is to find fun, 
I will never find the joy because fun is not satisfying. Oneg pleasure is something that gives me joy if it's the right pleasure. What is the right oneg? How can I turn nega into oneg? When I speak around the world, I will ask this question. What is your happiest memory? What's your happiest memory as a kid? And what do you think your happiest memory is? No matter where I am, it doesn't matter the community, the education. You know what everybody says? It's never a thing. It's never like, oh, my doll. Um, you know, that Xbox. No, no, no. It's a memory of being with Bubby and Zadie, grandma and grandpa, cousins together on Sundays, going to the bungalow colony, camp, whatever it is. It's a memory of being with people, of connecting Beautiful. That is joy. That's oneg. That's pleasure. I need to ask myself, despite what's going on right now, okay, I wake up with the gratitude, fine. Who am I connecting with during the day and how? How am I connecting? If my connection is a resentful connection, there are people what's a, what's in our What's a resentful lives connection? Now. What do you mean resentful? <laughs> okay, you're, you're right now, you're living with your children. Children, you're living with your husband or you're living with yourself everyone has a different circumstance right mm -hmm. you have to connect you have to connect with somebody in your day now you could make supper and you could say oh, i can't take it anymore on the table your child can ask you mommy can you play a game with me mommy can you take me outside your husband can say something so simple like what's for supper and you explode right you explode. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> <Never, never. laughs> I have no idea what you mean. <laughs> okay. If you're, okay. If you're going to react versus be active, here we go. I'm resentful, so I am taking everything out on your request. And but I'm not really giving. I'm connecting, but I'm not really connecting. I'm so angry inside that the way that I'm reacting and giving right now so of course some losing over the with resentment so what does a person do about that how do you get rid of the resentment yeah okay that's a good question covid or not the first thing that i would say is i have to find a pocket of peace when we spoke about oxygen in the beginning of the show every woman must have a pocket of peace and for each woman it's something else We'll ask each of us, what's your pocket of peace? And we'll find three different pockets of peace. But you must have a place in your life where you find peace every single day. For, for some, some, it's physical activity. For some, it's reading a book. For some, it's calling a good friend and having a cup of coffee. For some, it's saying to Hillam. There's, there's no one who could look down at somebody else's pocket of peace. As long as you come out and you feel strengthened from it, that... You can then feel refreshed. Okay, I can do this now. That's number one. Two, I real about our lives. You know, sometimes there are people in our lives and we don't accept who they are. It says, Heve mikabelis kal adam panim yafos. Okay, accept each person with a, with a good face. It doesn't say greedy. Think about it. it says accept each person. Why? Because there are certain people in our lives or jobs in our life that we have that we don't accept and then we wonder why we're angry about it i was speaking to a mother the other day and she's very disappointed in her child's grades and in, in her child their child is not the child that she thought she would have okay and i explained to her you know you go to a candy shop and pick, pick a child hashem chose this child for you okay and sometimes it's a little bit difficult it's not what you thought but it doesn't mean that it's not good. You know what's not good? That you can't accept who she is. So it's as if you have a delicious peach in front of you. And you wonder every time you take a piece and like a pizza. But it's a peach. And every time you bite from the peach, what can I do to make this taste like a little garlic powder? <laughs> it's not going to work. Be macabell, but you could make a delight. You could do something yummy with that peach. But if you are not macabell, if you cannot accept what that is, what that person is, who that person is, 
and you keep getting disappointed, of course you're going to have a bit. So here's my job in my home right now. What's my My goal? goal? Ask myself, what's my goal right now? Is my goal to get my children on Zoom? Is my goal to get a nice dinner on the table? Then why am I angry if that's my goal? Why do I put it down like that? I have to accept my job right now. Yes, the children are home. I can't change that. I can't make a peach into a peach. Pizza. That goes into number three, which is make yourself a rooster. So I got to, this is, this was a, a mind bender here. A very, very, very powerful. Number, step number three. Why don't you go step right into the number rooster? three. Okay. okay, great. Step number three, I want to also say B'Shem Omro in the name of my mother. She said to me once, why do we say every day we make a blessing, Hashem, you know, make me like a rooster. Okay, we make the blessing. To be like a rooster who knows that you give the rooster the wisdom to know the difference between day and night. Like, what kind of blessing is that? Why would I want to be like a rooster? That's right. That's right? like, I'm like, yeah, actually, that's true. I, you know, you, do, <laughs> yeah, you may mouth the words, but yeah, hello. You to choose one hello, animal people. to be a rooster. <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah, okay. yeah I, I think I'll pass on that one. Thank you. Okay. So, yeah. If you've ever been on a farm or you're in camp, you wake up in the morning and it could be like five o'clock in the morning. And what do you hear? You hear that crow rooster. Now, you think the rooster ever says, you know what? I had it in the mood tonight. I, I'm not getting up tomorrow. There's no crowing for the people. Or it's it's just, it's bad weather. It's really, you know, I don't feel like it. A rooster will get up and know I have my mission. I get up no matter what until my last day on earth I am crowing like a rooster come la avodas habore get up get up to serve your god that means that I have a mission in this world it's not dependent on my mood it's not dependent on the weather it's not dependent on corona or not or what's going on I have a mission I have to discover my mission if I know my mission I will have joy it's not dependent on anything else so be like the rooster Be like the rooster. When you make that blessing every day, ask Hashem, ask God to give you the bina, the wisdom, to know the difference between day and night, to know how to get up and to say, this is my mission. That was number number three. Number three. Okay. And by the way, I just want to thank the Rebbitson because... Um, I'm basically going to go tell my husband that I have the Rebbitson's approval that my my pocket of happiness is online shopping, and now it's okay to do it. (laughs) Pocket of peace, Bubala. Pocket of happiness, pocket of peace, pocket of any. It's in the pocket. It's the the, the pocket of joy. (laughs) Then then we're going to need a Shala Bias class. No, but also Randy said um, on Facebook that it was so funny when you asked about a memory. She said her bubby um, playing with her hair. So it's amazing how, yeah, that that's like an experience is what the memory is. It's amazing. It was touch, you know, and that's what we're missing right now so much. Yeah. Okay, number four, Leah. Yeah, number four, Sarah had a very difficult life, but it was. And then, then I, let's see. Okay, so she had, had no, no child. So you're going to talk a little bit about about um, social media and comparing. And yes, like that. absolutely. So, so sorry, sorry Mainu, Mainu, Mother Sarah, she really is a role model over here because she had to live in isolation, if you think about it, away away from everything that she knew and try something that she's never tried before, which is what we're really going through. But despite it all the incredible blessings in her tent, brachas in her ohel, okay, we said her Shabbos candles from one week to the next. What does that mean? Shabbos is light. It's aura. You know, did, did you ever go to a home and so comfortable there because there's a house? happy environment and then beautiful beautiful place but it's just something's there or you can go on a vacation and you can be in the most gorgeous hotel i know i said that certain homes are cold cold, even though they're beautiful yeah that coldness after a lecture you speak about peace in the home i have to tell you something houses and no home because I cannot sit across from my husband 
at the table without either having a difficult word or mm -hmm. there's no words at all. Mm -hmm. So how do you create light the whole week from one Shabbos to the next? Aura, how do you create that light? And we have to figure out Simcha, that's what we're talking about right now, how it's the tone that you use in the home. You know, you can say the same thing, but what's the tone? I, in my parenting classes, I say, this is homework, okay? And it's going to sound so little, but it's so big. When you get up in the morning, look in the mirror and ask yourself, look in the mirror and say, would I want to wake up to this face? Because if the answer is no, then I have work to do. So especially during this smile does, a smile can give the person that you're living with, a child, your husband, a parent, if you're calling and, and you're you each other, you're t telling me that I'm happy to see you. You just gave me life, okay? That is joy. And if I'm able to give that to somebody, I'm able to create this light. My Again, back to something that my mother taught me, because these are such incredible lessons. When my mother arrived to Bergen-Belsen that first day, she's just a little girl, and my Zaidi looked at her and said, here, lichtikin, my precious light, here you have a grace avayda, you have a huge mission, you have a huge job. And my mother said, what can I do here, Tati? My Zaidi said, here you can give a schmeichel, you can give a smile, because when you give a smile to another person, hope. Mm. Now, if a little girl can do that in Bergen-Belsen, can't we do that in our homes under lockdown? It can't be so difficult, but it is. It is. Mm -hmm. It really is. So wake up tomorrow morning. The least I can do is give the people in my life a smile a good feeling. And when your children go to sleep, your husband goes to sleep, call a bubby, call somebody, give a smile over the phone. Do you know what that is? That's making your light last from one week to the next. So that number two, we spoke about having your, it means that your life is never stale. You have to look at your life and not other people's lives. So when we make challah, it's so beautiful. What do you do with the dough in order to have it rise? What do you do with the dough? You, you cover the dough. You okay. cover the dough. Why do you cover the dough? Because if you want bracha in your life, if you want blessing and you want things to rise, cover the dough. Why do we have to post every time we have a piece of sushi? Why mm -hmm. does the sushi taste better if I post it? Why? Keep the bracha private. Keep it private. It's part of tznius. Tznius modesty is not just about clothing. It's about a way of life. I don't have to show everyone every single bite that I have in my mouth. And you will find more joy because you're not into looking at what everybody else is doing. When you compare lives, it strips you of the joy. How many times do you go on a vacation, let's say, and you think you, you got this amazing room and you're there and somebody you meet, right? And they say, oh, I got it on mileage. And, you know, this <laughs> is the price I got. And we have a view overlooking the ocean and we got upgraded. Okay. We have a suite. You're like, what? Right. When you're thinking that you were so happy two minutes ago, what changed? that somebody else has something else that you did not get. And it strips you of your joy. That's what I mean by joy. Don't compare. And the third is, by Sari Menu, by Mother Sarah, is she always had that anan. She always had a cloud over her tent. What does that mean? There was a sanctity. There was a connection that she had with Hashem, with God. Even in the year 2020, even here amidst Corona, we have been given this, not challenge, opportunity to connect to God, to connect to Hashem in such an intimate way. What is tefillah? What is prayer? It's not where you go. Uh, our shuls are closed. Our schools are closed. Hashem still wants us. Hashem still loves us. But Hashem is saying, whatever you're doing to connect with me, do it now in your home. And where is Shabbos? Where do we light our candles? 
Where do we bench our licht? In our homes. Where do we do our Seder? In our homes. Where do we do Hanukkah licht? In our homes. There's something about a home that is very holy, but it's up to me to plug in. In vain do I have the outlet. I have to know how to plug in. So feel a prayer. We learn from Chana. We whisper. Why do we whisper? Why do you think we whisper? Why shouldn't we be shouting the words out loud? Why do you whisper? You ever watch a newlywed couple and they're whispering to each other? You know, I don't know when we lose that, but watch the newlyweds together. Yeah, no, no, we don't lose that. We just whisper different things. We <laughs> whisper, like, stop talking. Why are you saying so much? Why do you have to be here? Yeah, we whisper other things. Okay. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so the newlyweds, when they have that intimate conversation yeah. in, the, in that manner, that's tefillah, that's prayer. When I whisper, it's only between me and God, between me and Hashem. There's no one else in the world who should be hearing that. I have my wishes, I have my dreams, I have my heartbreaks, I have my challenges, I have my my most intimate prayers, and it's between me and Hashem. That's it. So that's how you create that Anan. That's how you create that, in 2020, that cloud above your home. It's a connection. Every time that I take a drink drink of water and I stop, and I make a blessing, I make a bracha, shahakol niyeh bidvaro, that everything comes from the word of Hashem, that's emuna, that's faith. But what do we do? You know, and we, we rush it, we rush our connection. So breathe, take a step back, think. Wait, so speaking about connection, we had an Instagram, an Instagram question come in even before the show started. Um, from Liat, who asked, any suggestions for how to connect with a husband during these times, being that date nights are hard, the kids are home, there's all these things, and the one person you're not connecting with, sadly, seems to be your husband. Absolutely. I've spoken to so many parents who told me there's, like, no privacy in their home. Like, they've They've given up. You know, the kids are up 11, 30, 12, and they go to sleep. But we're not even talking about teenagers, <laughs> you know, like you're nine years old and you're walking around. It's 1130 at night. Every time you're trying to have a conversation with your husband, there's like this little face over there, you know. So what can you do and what must you do to keep Shalom Bayis alive? I would say that, first of all, find a place and a time that you can speak to your husband. And it's OK to say to the kids, this is daddy and mommy's time, or this is our time, and use your strength of Bina. What's Bina? Bina is the wisdom that was given to women where I see something inside something, meaning you see a wall, my husband, I see color, and I see that if we just Mm -hmm. move this and put this here, you know, we transform things. Transform your kitchen into a cafe one night, Mm -hmm. okay? And have a date in the cafe, okay? It can be different type of cooking. Whatever it is, use your imagination. But it's so important. That's number one. And no kids. No, you could tell the kids, this is mommy and daddy's time. It's okay. I even had a family that I teach. They told me that their kids actually made a meal for them to (laughs) enjoy where they sat down. And, you know, yes, you're thinking, oh, what a mess that's going to be. You know, let it go for a little bit. Let it go for a little bit. Be free a little bit. It's not about the mess. It's not about the homework sheets right now. It's about that connection because that's what makes us healthy. Think to yourself before you snap, before you criticize. This is a time of kindness. And what I would normally say, don't say it right now. You can always say it tomorrow, okay? Mm. But I've got to take a step back because we're all under a lot of pressure. And that one word of kindness that you have or just appreciation, affection, you don't know what that could do. I'll, I'll call it the three A's. I say that in a marriage class. Affection, appreciation, or admiration. Give one of those three every day to your partner. Affection, 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 Affection. appreciation, or admiration. Gorgeous. And it doesn't have to be huge. You don't. It doesn't even cost money. But sometimes, sometimes it's harder to give that than to buy a gift. Go to number five because we're running out of time here. So number five. That 
is gorgeous, gorgeous. I'm still back with your mother in Bergen Belsen with a smile. I'm just like, mm-hmm. if she can do that, like we can smile. We can smile. Like how we can smile? So much chizik from your from your zady. Okay, so number five was find your mission, and this is amazing because I think people like. Someday I'll find my mission. Someday I'll know why, what my tafkid is, what my purpose is, and why God put me here, and what's different than me than anybody else. And you know, every you is supposed to be, every person is supposed to be their own person and and doing their own thing and have their mission in life. Well, I, I'm just up to my eyeballs and diapers and and dishes. So you know, I, I, like really. So I lo- I, I think everyone's going to gain a lot from what you have to say. Okay. So okay. So, first, so first of all, let's let's just make this clear. There's no perfect life out there. And to say that somebody is the perfect woman, we've got to get that out of our heads. You know, I want to be like her or like her. Be who you are. That's number one. The message comes from Hashem the moment we come into this world because we're billions of people in this world, but everybody has a different set of fingerprints. And just like there's no one with the same physical fingerprints, no one has the same spiritual fingerprints. Hashem created every single one of us with our own spiritual fingerprints. That's my mission. Is one more important than the other? You say diapers. What's what's so terrible? It's it's one of the greatest things. Look at Shifra and Pua, okay, in Mitzrayim, in Egypt, the two midwives. What did Hashem look at them and say, wow, you are saving the Jewish people? And what were they called? They weren't called like Hatzala that, you know, we're saving. Shifra, because she made a baby beautiful. Pua, because she said, poo, poo, and she calmed the baby. That was their mission. And they saved an entire generation. I I need right now to figure out what's my mission right now and not make my mission feel little. I don't have to go out and save a village in Africa to have a mission. Sometimes my mission is at different stages of life, to have my children connect to Hashem, to create a home that is reflective of Kedusha, of sanctity. Now, how do I do that? I need to set a goal. And I cannot minimize the mission just because I don't have some big career. For everyone, their mission is different. So what is the gift that I have been given by Hashem? And I say this for parents also. Every child has a different gift. Don't ask one child, why can't you be like that child? Don't compare. A sense of humor is a mission in life, okay? A personality is a mission if I use it to make this world better. If I'm a good baker or a cook, now what can I do to make this world better with that? If I have patience, that's a mission, okay? Everything is a mission. The question I need to ask myself every night is, who did I touch today and how did I make this world in a, to a better place because I lived? That's my question. Yeah, it's so it's so beautiful that you said that because I just recently, uh, a few weeks ago, I had a friend who was so down the whole week and we were trying to figure out what was going on because everything was really, I mean, she had the usual stresses, but nothing different than any other week. And then as we were talking, it came out that she had, you know, anytime she had downtime, she was on social media. And she said to me, no, no, but Sarit, I was only on really good things, like very inspirational things. I wasn't like on crazy stuff. But she said, but that person does nishmas and that person says to heal him and that person's inspiring hundreds. And all I'm doing is home changing diapers and making suppers. And I'm going, that's why she's depressed, because she doesn't realize how powerful her being home changing diapers and you know, taking care of her husband is in her mind. She wants to be like these other women that are just, you know, powerhouses who are changing the world and inspiring hundreds. And she doesn't realize her little, you know, home of five, her inspiring her five is probably the most. how, How did we get out of Egypt? How did we get out of Mitzrayim? Because women knew that they were raising the next generation. And I cannot inspire anyone if I'm not inspired myself. That's the truth. So I have to figure out what's my mission and don't belittle your mission. There was I'm getting confused a little bit, Rebitson. Mission is like you're saying mission is your your thing you're doing right a goal you have right now, or is it like your lifelong dream, or is it like it's all wrapped up in the same thing? So 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 I, I realized one day when I was davening that there's only 
One, one person that we say is was happy in our davening, Yismach Moshe b'mat Chalko. okay? Moshe was happy with the gift of his chalak, of his portion, meaning he knew what he had to do in life. Now, missions can sometimes change. Today, I have a short-term mission. That is maybe that my mission survival, today, survival, 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 through the day, right, okay. But, but how am I going to survive? Survive or thrive? Okay. okay, when I put my children to sleep at night, what is the feeling in my home? What's my mission over here? And the mission can be something so small, but it's really not small, that my children go to sleep feeling loved, that my children go to sleep feeling connected to Hashem. That's a mission, that my children know that at night, let's all say to Hillam together, one, one chapter, one chapter, and because this is Shalom Bias show, you know, about relationships and marriage and whatever, make the mission something with your husband. Let's hear a couple of examples of that. Because that, that's really that, the, yeah. That my husband and I can go to sleep and know that despite all the okay. challenges in the world, the blessing from under the chuppah, okay, kol chatan kol kala, the voice of the bride and bridegroom is still alive in my home. And what's that voice? What can I do for you? Can I help you? Can I get you something instead of, are you nuts? What were you thinking? What's your problem? You didn't pay the bill yet. I mean, that is a mission to keep love alive. But how do I make that tangible? We break it down into little steps. Give a good word. Give a kind word. Be encouraging. Don't bring everyone down. That's a mission. Despite my fear, despite my sadness, People are grieving now for a lot of things. And if your spouse is feeling grief or sadness, to put your eyes on somebody else and not yourself, that's a mission too. To keep love alive, to keep connected, that's a huge mission. So I have a mission today, and then I have a mission at this point in my life. Okay, what's my vision for myself? Because we coast too much in life. People coast and you wake up after 5, 10, 15 years and you're like, wow, where did all that time go? What happened? Time is a gift from Hashem. What we do with it is our choice. There's no one listening today who could say, well, that person has 26 hours in the day and I only have 24. We all have 24 hours. What do I do with my time? That's my choice. So we have so much potential in our lives. Now, what am I going to do with it? How do I find the joy? By knowing that I have a mission. Hashem loves us. I have no doubt about that. Every artist signs their piece of artwork with love. Hashem signed you and me. How? We're coming to Shavuos. We have the Aseris Hadibros, the Ten Commandments. Okay? The name of Hashem is Yud Yud, Ten Ten. Every one of us, we have 10 fingers, we have 10 toes. Hashem signed us, Hashem loves us. Just look at ourselves. And the word for panim, for face, is never in the singular. It's always plural. Why? It's the only part of our body that Hashem, that God created, that I cannot look at right now. I can look all over. I can't, whatever I do, my face does not belong to me. It belongs to you, every person who looks at me. So I have a mission to make this world better through my face, through my smile, through my words, through my eyes. I have so much choice in my life. Be an active person, not reactive. You will find that joy. By the way, Sarah, Sarah Baker from um, Facebook said this is really good. And they actually, a couple of people want to know if this is being saved because this is like, this is a keeper. <laughs> this is something you got to go back to a couple of times just to really get yeah, it. Oh, it's fantastic. You are so inspiring. It's such a pleasure. You, do you feel like there's this like, fountain yeah. of something? By the way, we were getting a lot of hearts and like thumbs up. Thumbs and people up were just like different. shooting things. So yeah, that's what I felt like. There's a lot of that. <laughs> but you know what? We didn't know each other before. And I feel so connected to you. Ooh. Because look at that, you know, you can connect and that is called bari, that's healthy, that's making connections in life. We all should do it and can do it. Well, you've given us a great deal. I, people are going to ask me, what? 
What is the home? A home. But also, I want to find out how can people reach you, and what's first of all, what's the name of your book? Ah, the name of my book. I can show it to you, okay. right oh, here. Good. Okay, can you see oh, it? Gorgeous. Okay. Yes. Raising a Child with Soul by St. Martin's Press. Okay, it's a parenting book. We go through happiness and gratitude and sibling rivalry, all the things. And you can reach me at slovihineni at gmail.com. S-L-O-V-I-E-H-I-N-E-N-I. Slavihineni at gmail.com. We'll have it in the link below, whatever. But okay. also, that's where they, they can get, like, um, you, you give Zoom classes, articles. You're giving a bunch of things coming up. So people look up her right away because yes. she's got some great and events. I'm on H.com also. You can find a lot of my pieces on H.com. Fantastic. Okay, that's terrific. Okay, so we didn't get to do homework. I forgot to mention this to you. And Torah anytime. Oh, yeah, Torah right. anytime. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. Torah Thank you, anytime. Torah anytime. Torah anytime. Okay, fine. Yeah, big shout out to Torah anytime. Shout out to Torah anytime. Awesome. So what the um, what we want to do is we want to give homework to uh, of, of one thing. Um, and I'm thinking the thing that moved me the most from this whole thing, although there was it was packed, is smiling at people mm. like if you can do nothing else at a bare minimum and you're just in survival just think like what am i going to do like i can't cope i can't whatever find someone and smile at them <laughs> you know so, so, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so when when the reverend was talking about when you, when you look at yourself and you think is this the face i want to wake up to for like a, i'm thinking Wow. You know, like my husband and kids may not want to see my face sometimes. So the smile. <laughs> we impact others. That's the yes. truth. That's yeah. It. And when I impact others with goodness, I feel joy. Amazing. That's fantastic. Thank you so much, Remington, for being on with us. This is Leah Richheimer with the Ladies Talk Show. Thank you you so much for enjoying for jo joining us and enjoying yes. us or joy yes. joy yes. Not joy today <laughs> yes. 